Hey everyone, welcome along to uh, another Ski Sunday, Ski Sunday number eight. Um, I'm amazed to manage to keep this going, but it's, uh, yeah, it's really good fun. And um, hi Rector, how's it going? Um, yeah, just reading your comment about the pit, pitch waving. Um, that's interesting. It's something I need to look into. I'm wondering if it's something uh, from my end, maybe to do with the kind of sinking or something. Uh, I'll definitely look into that. Um, I'll also check it, check back on the recording, but I haven't noticed it back on the recordings. But anyway, uh, I'll check that out. Hey, Funky on. How you doing? Great to have you on board again. Brilliant for uh, for another ski Sunday. All right, look, I'm going to crack on with this. Um, obviously, I'm monitoring the chat, so just uh, anything you want to you want to put in, please feel free. Um, so basically, with this, uh, I'm going to look at kind of strategies for finishing tracks, mainly because um, I'm in this process of finishing tracks myself or wanting to finish tracks for an album. Um, it's tracks that I've started some of them like many years ago, and I finally kind of recalled them and. Um, I'm just kind of going through methodically trying to sort of finish these things off. But it did make me think, well, what are the things? How do you know when a track's finished? So um, you might have seen I put in something in the Discord uh, a channel, um, which I just thought I'll leave that there because maybe as we go on moving forward, we can just kind of if we think of something, we can kind of put it in there. Um, but for the time being, um, I've actually put together just a few things I just thought I'd I'd kind of bring up first um, and I've even done a keynote <laughs> how about that um, so let's just run through a few of these things um, and then maybe we can kind of start actually employing them um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set another timer on this as well um, so once we kind of get going I've got an hour basically to kind of try to uh, analyze what I need to do and then finish it off so I'm going to play a little bit of music underneath here there we go um, let's just Make sure it's not too overwhelming. Let's just turn it down a little bit. There we go. So strategies for finishing tracks, how to move on. Oops. And that's the wrong, there we go, I'll start again. Okay, so I think basically it's just that kind of, for me, it's the understanding that you need to move on. Um, and it's, I'm sure everyone suffers from the same thing of just having endless tracks that they've got that they're in kind of various unfinished states, um, but you can't really move on until you've actually finished something and ideally kind of got it out. I mean, for me, that's the main goal is to just get something out, um, release it, whether that's physically, vinyl, CD, or digitally or both. Um, so just a few things, these are, I mean, this is by no means an exhaustive list. This is just a few things that I've sort of jot jotted down, but I think setting a deadline is obviously really good. Um, setting yourself a time limit. Um, I know that I work really well if I'm given uh, a deadline um, by a label or a client or someone said right I need a remix and I need it done by next week then that just kind of puts me into gear and it kind of just makes me work towards something so I think the hardest thing often is when you uh, you know you're, you're just working by yourself and you haven't really got a deadline you know you could if you wanted to you could spend another year on your album or, or a track but it doesn't really help you know so anyway that's the first thing I think this is a difficult one as well is like don't start a new track until you finish the one you want to get done um, it's definitely tempting but like I said before you just end up with kind of too many starting points so I'm in that one at the moment of just trying to kind of not move on to anything else until I finish the thing that I'm wanted to get done um, I think getting feedbacks really good so uh, if you've got a track try to share it with your friends or your family just get them to give you give a give them a listen give it a listen um, and just get some sort of gentle um, feedback. Hey, Rex, I'm just saying you've got <laughs> 12, 12 tracks in progress. Well, I'm kind of the same, but I'm just kind of going through them methodically. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, I found that actually sharing stuff on social media can be really good as well, just to get some, just to kind of, I don't know, just put the feelers out, you know? I mean, I did, I did it this week on the track that I'm going to be working on now. I just did it on Instagram and I just got a few nice comments and it just made me feel good about it. Like, okay, when I do finally finish this, people are going to like it. Hopefully, some people will anyway. If I hadn't got anything, then I probably would have questioned if it's even worth carrying on with that track at all. 
Um, and definitely yeah, in the early days of MySpace, that actually, from doing that process, that actually gave me the confidence to start a label. So I do think that it can have lots of benefits. Um, so this is a strategy really, and it's like listen through and make notes. Uh, and I'm gonna be doing this uh, in a bit once, once we get going. Um, ideally, actually, it's best to listen to the track like, away from the DAW. So actually just do a bounce and just listen on headphones like in a different room or in a car on your smartphone, upload it to SoundCloud. Just, just listen to it like not looking at the actual timeline and how things are going in. You want to detach yourself from that. So I found that's a, that's a good strategy. Um, and when you're making notes, um, kind of put them into categories as well. So you might want to write, write down, okay, so what some ideas I've got that could make this better? What are the issues? Maybe there are some mix issues, the kick drum's not loud enough or um, it's too, too much top end or whatever. Write those down. And then also maybe arrangement and structure. So, you know, may, there might be a really good section that comes in, you think you know, that might want to come earlier. So if you just kind of listen through and list those down, um, and I find that using something like Trello, uh, project management system like Trello is really useful for that because you can actually list those things off and then just tick them off as you go. And it can be quite cathartic as you're going through, you're, you're sort of setting yourself little milestones, like, okay, done that, now I can move on to the next thing. So when you're going through that process, I've just jotted down a few questions that you could ask yourself. So things like, is the start of the track and the finish, finish finish the end bit of the of the track okay does it you know is it if it's a more of a dance track is it going to be good for DJs um, to kind of mix in um, you know does it does it finish too abruptly could it go on a bit longer could it be a bit shorter um, is the track too dense can I strip it back that's always definitely something that I, I kind of lean towards is like putting too much in and actually the sort of final stages of the track could actually just be stripping things away um, what I often find, find as well is that, that sometimes there are some sort of strong elements in the track that are just being hidden. There might have been like a little arpeggio or a little riff or something, and it, it could be more exposed so that that could maybe form more of focus of the track. Um, is there enough excitement throughout the track? Will, we, will people want to listen to the end? Will they just sort of skip after a minute and go on to the next track? Um, and I think it, in that kind of area, <clears throat> look at are there enough highs and lows and dynamics you know does there is there a drop and does it move and you know kind of keep you interested all the way through and ultimately yeah, do you look forward to listening to it you know when you're kind of coming to the end of the day and you just want to have a little kind of chill out and listen to some tracks you know is that one that you you really would want to listen to yourself <clears throat> and then finally yeah are you confident to play it to your friends um so hi Recto, um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely share these slides. Um, I'll put them, I'll put them onto Discord, definitely. Um, and obviously, this will be, this will be going up as well on, uh, you know, um, probably on my YouTube channel, so you can watch it back. So I think just actually, you know, when you're actually, I'm just going to play a non-vocal track. There we go. I've actually got I'm using this, which is this. Swintzian app. It's when in, when iTunes got rid of these these kind of the way that you can organise all your music, uh, and they've put, they've actually put that feature back now. Um, but anyway, I started using this, which is really nice. So uh, okay, let me just let me just play something. Let's play this Medusa. Cool. Right, let's go back to where we were. So yeah, keeping organized. So I think definitely when you're working on an album, so like Recto, you mentioned you're working on 12 tracks, then try to make your life as easy as possible on your computer. So, you know, creating aliases to files, projects, if they're in different places, spread across multiple hard drives. Um, make sure your sound libraries all load up okay. You know, every time you load up a project, you don't want to be having missing files and missing sounds. Making Make sure that everything's in advance loading up really quickly so that if you do want to just quickly crack on with something you're not going to mess around um, having missing stuff. Um, high housekeeping in your actual project so things like hiding unused tracks make sure you name all your tracks. Um, hey Ben how you doing? <laughs> Hope you had a nice cycle. 
um, delete muted parts, color code tracks or groups of tracks like drums and vocals. Again, that's kind of something I'm going to be looking at in a, in a bit. And then finally, when do you know uh, a track is finished? Um, for me, I suppose it's when all the detailed components that you're pouring over and you're, you know, you're analyzing, they all kind of merge into one. And, and when you listen back to it, you no longer think about them or you focus on them. You just listen to the track as a whole. I think that's one of the ways that I know when, it, when a track's finished. Um, I can just enjoy it sort of for what it is. Um, cool, nice one, Ben. <laughs> Um, and then some final tips, um, things like referencing other tracks for, um, for mix and arrangement could always be good. So like using AB software, um, I'll show you some examples of that in a minute, um, and mapping out structure templates as well. So listen to what other people do um, to see you know, a track that you love, you know, maybe look at their, their arrangement and structure and see if they're doing, you can learn something from what they're doing. Um, figure out when is the best time of day to work as well. Um, it could be that you work really well in the morning uh, or late at night, but just you know figure out when that when the best time is. Um, and then something that I've actually learned from um, an artist called Tennyson, who's been doing some lots of twitches um, over the last few months, and he's working on his album, is that he actually creates these sort of working blocks. So he'll just divide his time into sort of hours where he'll do 50 minutes just work on the project uh, and then 10 minutes break and he'll just do some sort of squat thrusts or play chess or something but he's creating like definite breaks in his workflow and I think that's a that's a really good kind of um, thing to learn so there we go that's um, just a few tips there let me just see if I can quickly bring up um, this so I just did a very quick search this is actually an article written for music tech by my uh, friend Declan Declan McGlynn and it's got six of the best audio analysis tools. Um, so this is really good for kind of A-being. Um, I've used this before, the Sample Magic AB one, it's really good, but there's a whole bunch of those. So um, I'll just grab that link uh, and I'll just put that in the chat actually. So if you wanna look at that, it may be that you've got some ones that you use, you can let me know about, um, but yeah, cool. So let's just stop this now. Um, there we go, and let's get into it. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I've got I've got Trello here. Um, I don't know if you've used Trello before. Um, I use it at work loads for organising, you know, working with my team for all of us working together. But it's really good as, as a tool for your to use for your own productions as well. Metric AB, okay, yeah, I've heard of that one. That's that's really good as well. Uh, Rexo, nice one. Um, so anyway, this is I just I've just got a, a board here um, that I use, and it's just kind of music called music work. Um, and you can see uh, you can basically kind of create these lists, um, and then you can uh, add cards to those lists. And then within within the, each card, you've then got uh, a way that you can actually uh, put in checklists. So you can see, as I was just following on from what I was talking about earlier, I've got one for ideas, mix ideas, and arrangement structure. Thanks, thanks, Funky, for the background. That's actually my push, which I took with my camera um, for a long time ago. Um, so what we're going to what we're going to be doing is we're going to listen through to this track. Um, I'm actually going to just drag this over here, uh, and I'm actually sort of breaking my first rule, which is when I said that you should, it's good to kind of listen away from uh, the DAW, but I think for the purposes of this, um, I'm just going to uh, make it easier for myself. Um, so let's just uh, make two windows there. There we go. Um, and actually the first thing I'm gonna do is, is uh, so this is the track that I've, I sort of almost thought was finished, but then I listened back to it and I thought, actually, no, there's still some things I need to I need to do with it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I've actually kind of on the master channel, <clears throat> um, I've got a group here where I've got two UAD plugins. Um, this one, which is the G-Bus, G-Bus compressor. Um, and then I've also got the, uh, and the Ampex ATR102 as well. Um, the thing about these is that they, create latency so when i'm trying to play something in it just creates kind of quite annoying latency uh, so i'm actually going to 
take that off and even if you mute it it doesn't it doesn't seem to help the help help it at all the latency um, and even with reduced latency when monitoring it doesn't seem to uh, make a difference either um, and you can actually see that if I just hover over like this one you can see at the bottom it says 631 samples 14 14.3 milliseconds for that one um, and then two 2838 which is 64.4 milliseconds so that's quite a lot so I'm actually just going to uh, just save this for the moment. I'm going to call this Master Channel. This track has got a working title of Internet Down. So I'm just going to put that on there. Um, and let's just drag this into the, my presets. You can see I've actually got the Master Channel there. But that just means that I can delete that now um, from the Master Channel and I can drag that back in when I want to. So let's just double check that's going to work. There we go. Yeah, it's coming back in. So, all right, so we're safe. We're safe with that. Um, all right, so let's just listen to it from uh, the top. Um, let's just, yeah, maybe, maybe just lose this as well. So it's a kind of house track, quite, I don't know, sort of soulful house track. Um, Funky, I'm just reading your message. Uh, right, okay. Yeah, it is kind of an annoying thing. I mean, I, I've, I've certainly found that the reduced latency when monitoring is really helpful, but um, certainly having stuff on the master channel is not ideal when you want to carry on sort of programming. So cool. All right, so we've got ideas, mix ideas, and arrangement structure. Um, <laughs> Soulful House crew. OK, so here we go. Let's have a listen through. Um, and by all means, if you've got anything, anything you want to comment on as well, I'll write that down um, and let's go for it. OK, so let's listen to the whole track. And I'm just going to double check. Sometimes I have an issue with my mic cutting out, so I'm just going to make sure that that's not going to happen. Uh, hold on. Stream Labs. OK, now that's working. Cool. Oh, also. Let's just make sure I've got my audio output. Yep, that's going to Streamlabs. Right, and then for the final thing is I'm going to start the timer here. So I'm going to give myself an hour for this whole thing. Uh, so here we go. Is that working? Yes, we're timing down. All right, here we go. So let's listen from the top.
There we go. Um, thanks, everyone. Thanks for listening through. Ben, thanks for your um, feedback as well. Um, so, yeah, you're, you asked about some rolling percussion. Um, that could be good. Well, just interesting what you mean by kind of rolling. Um, what's just how you define rolling? Let me know. Um, so, okay, so you, it's a really, really interesting point there about the roads as well. So that is, uh, it's the Roland Cloud JV1080. Um, and it was quite a, a conscious decision to use that kind of sound, actually. Um, I just wanted to kind of give it a bit that kind of 80s, 80s vibe. Um, yeah, I suppose there's, I mean, I, I would always lean towards an, a real Rhodes, Fender Rhodes kind of sound, but I quite like the kind of clean cleanliness of this, of that sound. Um, and what you say about live stuff, definitely. So one of the things that I've actually added in here um, would be to add some more kind of improvisation. So um, I was going to use that sound. I mean, it may be, if I've got time, it may be interesting to see see what it sounds like replacing that electric piano with the with the FM's sort of piano, but, um, but we'll get to it. But um, cool. So, I mean, yeah, I've got some congas in there, but maybe I'll, I'll find out, because I've forgotten actually what percussion I'm using. So maybe there's some more sounds that I could use with that. It could be really good. Um, so things that I've... Uh, noted down myself. So when I, I did a very quick video on Instagram this week where uh, I was actually muting, I was focusing on one of the sounds, which was actually the massive sound, which is this one here. Um, I was actually celebrating the fact that massive, original version of massive actually now works in live 11 because it wasn't working in the 11 beta for some reason. So this, so what I was actually doing was I was kind of, if I can just do that now, yeah, I was, I was, so, I was kind of soloing it, that kind of thing, and it's what I quite like about the solo is it cuts everything, cuts the effects or whatever, it's quite like a sudden, it's suddenly like clean break, so I was thinking of actually um, incorporating a bit of that um, into the sections, so obviously, I mean, you know, that's a, a classic technique is just to sort of for a few beats or even a, even a whole bar kind of bring everything out before the new section, a new section comes in. Um, I was thinking maybe of adding a clap sound to the snare um, just because it's quite the, the drums are a little bit kind of thin sounding, but I quite like that as well. I don't want to sound it's like sort of too full on. Um, I was also thinking of adding some toms maybe to those to the fills. So that kind of maybe ties in, Ben, with what you're saying about more sort of rolling percussion. So just having a bit more of that element in there. Um, I was thinking maybe a bit more modulation on the synths. Um, we'll have a look at the synths in a minute. I'm using the uh, Tyrell, Yuhi Tyrell N6, which is great free synth. Maybe there's a bit more we can do with that. I have got some automation on going on at the moment. And also just, yeah, the bit more improvisation on the JV piano. Um, mix ideas, I was thinking maybe I could kind of put a, uh, a delay on on one of the returns um, and then actually sort of just do some sort of delay spins on some snares or claps or whatever just to kind of make it sound a bit more live sounding. Um, and then finally, uh, so it's all pretty much the same section until we get to this B section. <laughs> Which I really like and I'm thinking it's nice that it comes in at the end but maybe that can actually be more that, that can come in earlier and then we can go back to this section so we've got maybe like a more of an a b a b type structure um, so there we go so we've got the we've got the list of things here um, and I think if I can kind of get all those done uh, in the next 50 minutes um, then I would probably say that I'm happy with the track and and, it, and, it, and it's finished and I can move on. Obviously, there's always going to be a temptation to do more and add more, but um, I think that, you know, that's just kind of pinpointing some things. So cool. All right. Well, look, I'll, I'll leave that there for the moment. Um, and what I'm going to do first is just do a bit of housekeeping. So I'm just going to close the door. Hold on. There we go. Have a glass of water. So this is what, what this is something that I was mentioning um, 
before where it's just you know you've often been working on the track and for for a long time and you just haven't named things very well and it's just a nice feeling if you can kind of maybe start with a nice fresh clean project uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just 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 for peace of mind just so I know that I can always come back to this version of the project um, I'm gonna just name this like put to, or actually maybe I'll maybe I'll just put seven there we go cool ah nice one yeah I think this countdown thing's great it, it really kind of I mean I'm doing this kind of I suppose because I'm I'm on twitch at the moment but it's a really good thing to uh, to employ if you do get a chance to check out um, Tennyson's twitches uh, they're they're great the Pomodoro technique, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Sounds interesting though. Sounds very Italian. Um cool. All right, so let's have a look here. So I've saved that now. So anything we do now we can we can not worry about. Um the other thing as well that's useful, and this is something that I've been using for a few years, and it's something I missed from Logic, which is the basically the hidden track feature, because that's a really good way of housekeeping. Um however, you can there's a way around that, and if you basically just create a folder in your project folder called hidden um, you can then just drag stuff in there and it will always come back so this track here is I think this is how I started off the track with these RK3 drum sounds these are nice in fact let me just see if there's anything oh that's really nice isn't it that could that could work quite well as a as a clap Hey, I'm going to keep that in. All right, so that's <laughs> that's a, a nice revelation. Um, so I'll leave that there. We've got a shaker. This is I've listened to the shaker. Nice. And I've got an auto pan. Let's just get rid. Of, let's just open this out for the moment. Cool. So let's just get rid of the the one before it. Shaker. Um, so I've already done some grouping here. I've got this synth group here and. Um, I'm compressing all the synths. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering if have I got some sidechain? Okay, yeah, I've got a sidechain compression compressor on that. So if I just okay, cool. So that's on that, um, and let's just this is this is the Terrell. sound um, stack fifths so yeah I'll just call that uh, let's just name that whoa what happened there there's an inadvertently uh, kind of deleted stuff Just do another relying on the undo here. Yeah, few. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's just using up valuable time. Um, okay. So there's. Let's just name this. Let's call this uh, Tyrell. Tyrell fifths. Cool. Um, and then we got this which is uh, an analog sound. This is kind of boosting up the bass. So let's just name that. Um, this is Chicago bass. Um, then we've got another Terrell sound here. Uh, let's just check that out. through this let's go two two four it's quite nice okay so that's the energy pad so let's just name that energy pad okay so uh, then we've got this massive sound which uh, I'm so happy is now working uh, 
So it's another fifth C sound. Chord of optimistic. Ah, that's interesting. It's got some modulation on it. Okay, let's just add that as something we can maybe uh, do. So add modulation or LFO modulation, LFO mod to massive. It might already be there, to be honest, um, but if it's not, then we can add it in. So let's just do massive lead. Uh, right, then we get to the JV1080, uh, which is the sound that Ben, you picked up. Uh, let's just bring that up, load it up. Uh, oops. So very, very DX7-y, uh, even though it's coming from a JV1080. Um, Octa EP3, I've got Super JV up there actually, don't know if you can see it. There we go, that's my JV. So it's very nice actually being, being able to recall some tracks um, and do it in the box. So JV E piano, there we go, so that's that. Uh, then we've got the Selena. So this is this is playing some nice parts here. Um, the Archeria Selena. Let's just name that Selena. Uh, then we've got actually something from my Nord Modular, um, which was recorded in as audio. And I'm just, I've just got some volume modulation on this. I think I uh, deliberated over that sound for quite a while. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's that. So that's all the synths, quite a lot of synths in, in there actually. Um, so let's just close that up. Um, as I said, this is just really housekeeping at the moment. Um, so then I've got a drums subgroup, uh, and these are all coming from, I know there's a few things in here actually. So I've got this uh, drum rack. Let's just, let's just uh, solo that. Okay, so let's just let's maybe name that kick kit, even though there's a hi hat in there. Um, and just trying to think what else. What, what, what am I doing in here? Oh, okay. So I've got a various automation going on here. So uh, there's okay. Let's. Oh, I know what it is. I'm automating the release. Yeah, the release on the hat. And also, also the send to reverb as well. Ah, interesting. Okay, that's cool. I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, we've got a crash here. That's good. That's named nicely. Then we've got this sound. Okay, let's just call that the snare kit. Cool. Um, and then what have we got here? Okay, so this is looks like it's this is feeding into the snare kit, and these are some additional snares. So let's just name that. Uh, add snares. Um, and let's also let's also color that. Uh, Cool, we're gonna color it that. So I'm sure this is all stuff that uh, everyone is doing already. Um, let's do assign color to clips. Nice, so we've got that in there. Then we've got some percussion. So this is this is in be interesting to work out what, we've, what is going on with this percussion. Sounds like it's a loop that's cut up.
Cool. So we'll keep that percussion there. That's not, actually not in that group, um, which is interesting. So just to make things a bit nicer, I'm going to drag the uh, drag the shaker down there so it's next to the percussion. So we've got synths at the top. Uh, what's this? Millimetric. Millimetric kit. It's nice, isn't it? Um, okay, let's just drag that to the top as well. So that's a, that's a few kind of alternative sounds we can maybe use. Um, how am I doing for time? Okay, not much time. Um, okay, so we've got that. And then this is a hardware template, which has probably got the, it's got the MIDI for that Nord that I recorded, but that's all taking up unnecessary time, unnecessary space, real estate. Um, so we don't need any of that. So I'm going to drag that into my hidden folder. Uh, and then that means we can delete that. Um, and then we've got our sidechain uh, track here, which is just uh, playing probably a, what's it playing? It's probably playing a kit, a kick or something. Yeah, it's playing kick. So that's feeding into the synth. Uh, yeah, the synth subgroup uh, to give some sidechain compression. So yeah, maybe let's just drag that to the top as well. Okay, cool. So the first thing I just want to investigate, actually, let's just also just delete uh, any other extraneous audio. So we're just looking at what, what we've got here. So the next, so yeah, I'm going to look at this new section and see if I can bring that in earlier. see where we can go up to. All right, so maybe we could take that whole section there. Um, so I've just done a uh, command E and let's also uh, just put a marker there as well. So we've got B section. Uh, Hope everyone's all right, enjoying the, uh, the, the Sunday. Um, welcome along if you've just joined. Um, I'm just doing a bit of a kind of trying to finish off exercise here. Um, so, if, okay, so we've got that B section. Uh, let's see where it could come in. Maybe let's try it here. Hey, Pixel Chaos. That works quite well there, I think. Uh, you know, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a clearer idea of the actual time of this track. So uh, I'm not going to do, put it all the way to bar one. Um, can never bring myself to do that. Um, always need to have a little bit of a gap at the, at the front, especially when I'm bouncing down. Um, but you know what that's going to have messed up is just the start of the this section here. So I'm just going to drag that over there. There we go. Okay, so if we bring in the B section here, that's going to be around two minutes. Nice. Okay, that's good. I'm enjoying that. So. In that case, let's just grab all of that uh, and then grab all of that, bung it over there. And let's take, I think it was that section, was it? So let's grab that and uh, put it in there. Let's just see if the join is working. Right, let's just undo that and just actually copy it rather than. Okay. OK, 
Okay, good. Um, and then, what does it sound like if we then go back to... We then, yeah, I'm going to put a marker here uh, and just call that the A section again. Maybe we can drop the drums a little bit here. I'm just wondering if I brought that in a bit too early. Yeah, I did. So let's just grab a bit more of that. Uh, I'm piecing the puzzle. Okay. Okay, so let's just drag that over there now, and that should make a bit more sense. Um, section now. Okay, so we can get a better transition there, but I think that is, that's going to work quite nicely. Um, it's kind of boils down to what I was saying earlier about just keeping interest up. Um, so let's grab that now and slot that back in. And then I'm going to name these as well. So let's just put the A section. Uh, I'm just going to confuse myself. Uh, let's just drag this all out of the way. Drag this back over there, lovely. Uh, this is where the A section is, nice. Um, and then, and then we've got the B section as well there, which is how we're gonna finish off the track. Um, let's just have a look at the time. So, okay, quite long, but uh, maybe, maybe we can kind of edit it down. Um, but let's just mark that where the B section comes in again. Um, and also, likewise, let's put in where the B section comes in now. There, set. Uh, B section. Cool. And then we know that the A section is coming in at the start as well, but let's just put that in anyway. Cool. So. So I'm quite happy with... Uh, that now it still may be a bit too long, but I think probably probably five six minutes is 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 okay. Um, let's just now look at some of these other things. So uh, so maybe let's 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 look at the sort of the solo moment that I talked that I uh, talked about earlier. So this is where basically everything's going to cut um, and leading into different sections. So. going to be in this section here. All right, so we've got, what we've got here, we've got the bass line happening. So let's just mute that. I think that's probably the only thing, isn't it? Nice. Maybe it just needs to be all of that. Maybe a bit 
extreme. Maybe just take that note out. Not sure now. Is there anything else we can do? Maybe just those two notes. Okay. Let's see if there's any, any other moments we can add in. How am I for time? Okay, 20 minutes, 28 minutes. So what else have we got there? We've got shaker. Maybe we can take some shaker out. Let's just do a similar thing with the bass there as well. Maybe that note as well. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to park that there for the moment and just look at some of these other things I've got notes. So I'll tick that off for the moment. Um, there, the catharsis has, has started. Um, and also, oh, I can check this as well, put the end section in earlier. There we go. Um, so I've ticked a few things off. Um, add a clap. Okay, let's go up here to this sound where it might might be more of a finger snap actually, something that I heard earlier. Uh, let's put the accent on and let's put layout on as well. Um, let's have a look. I like that. Uh, turn the release on on that. So let's just see what this sounds like um, once the drums come in. Okay. Oh, these are all nice, aren't they? Um, oh, upgrade, opportunity to upgrade. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? Uh, let's just see if we... I'm just tuning up that clap. See if we can play them together. Okay, let's also increase, increase the release. Okay, that's nice. Um, and then let's also, in that case, close up the synths and then just put these in the subgroup uh, of the drums. Nice, um, and let's be nice and neat. Um, the claps. Nice. Um, I wonder if we can just put a nice bit of subtle reverb on this. Uh, let's just go to the EMT. <laughs> there we go, subtle. Okay, 
down the time. Be a little bit loud at the moment but let's let's record that in um it's also worth noting that i've got i'm using global quantize on here um an old favorite favorite of mine um i've got on everything so that's kind of controlling the groove and it's about it's at 26 percent at the moment okay so let's record this in so that's really really simple parts Turn it down a little bit. Copy that over. Have to be really careful with this because uh, there's, there's a little bit of clip slightly extended at the end, so you've got to be careful when you're copying it over. Okay. Hey Anthony, <laughs> nice one man. Thanks for the follow. Okay, so I'm just taking a clap out there. And I imagine we can bring it back in here. Cool, um, I'm, I'm running out of time. So I need to move pretty quickly here. Maybe this is the opportunity to look at this transition. So maybe this is... Nice one, Anthony. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, I'm quite happy with the sound of these, actually. Um, what am I doing? I've just got the drum bus, the classic drum bus. God, you know what? I've got the damp on. Whoa. What would happen if I took the damp off? Well, let's listen to it without the drum bus. I mean, the drum bus is probably the most genius plugin that's ever existed. Um, okay. I'm going to leave it like that. I mean, if it was if it was working, then you know um, it's fine. But normally, normally I would take that damp uh, off. Uh, yeah, drum bus is amazing, isn't it? Okay, so now I've got this uh, the A section coming back in after the B section. Um, it feels like it needs I need some 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 kind of dynamic change there. So it's probably going to be the drums, I'd imagine. Although okay, so it does go back down. But let's just see if we can just change take those claps and drums out there. Okay, that's kind of working, I think. Let's try that for the moment. All right, let's just forge ahead with these, adding these claps back in where they need to come in. They're not there, there. It's fine. Yep. This is where I start really kind of racing because I've got 19 minutes left. Oh my God. And I've got lots of things to do. Um, okay. Okay, cool. So we've got the claps in. That is another thing to check off on our Trello. Add a clap. Um, okay, add some tom toms for fills. All right, well, I don't know if you watched last week, um, but I did a Japanese vinyl sample session. And I actually uh, 
put all those sounds into a drum rack, which I put into the sub only channel on my Discord. Um, but I've got that is now as an opportunity uh, to come back to it. Um, and how am I going to find it? Where is it? I J surely, surely. Okay, let's just type in Japanese or Japan. There we go. Skirk for Japanese hits. So let's drag that in. And because I know there was some sample toms in there, which are really cool, which could work quite nicely. Uh, okay, just close that up. Let's have a listen. Let's take ourselves back to that session. Uh, let's just put the layout to everything. There we go. I wonder if that's going to work. I think that works nicely. Um, okay, so Tom fills. There we go. Uh, let's just drag it into the group again. Let's put it underneath these claps. Uh, okay, so let's just have a listen to where that could first come in. Yeah, I'm not happy about that that drop. I think I need to just park that idea and just reverse it. Uh, sometimes you need to do that. It's probably just going to be the same here, isn't it? I'll maybe leave that one for the moment. Um, all right, so this is going to happen when the I think when the proper drums come in. So probably there. Yeah. All right. So let's go back to the fills. Phil Collins. Okay, let's put it in. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, so let's uh, tidy that up a little bit. Um, and also, just referring back to this now, so this clip. Uh, so we've got the swing 1699, which I've got a feeling doesn't even exist anymore. Um, that particular groove. In fact, what happens if I bring it up? Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? They've made it go up to 74 now. Well, that's the logic one. Uh, swing. Maybe I'm just going mad. Swing 60. Yeah, they made it go up to. To 73. <laughs> uh, so, uh, all right, well, let's just let's just keep it with 73 then for the moment. Oh, no, it's there. It's in, it's in my pool. So, um, all right. So that will that will now inherit the global the global swing. All right, let's just check the velocities on that. Yep, they're all good. All right, see where else we can come in. Will it work there? Nice. Actually, I think I can probably take out more here. Maybe I can take out that entire snare. And maybe the shaker as well. And yeah, I did snares. Hey, Yudi. Um, 
Oh, cool. So, Yudi, I don't know if you checked the start of this, um, but I did a little walkthrough of uh, what well, a little kind of keynote, actually, uh, of all the kind of methods and, and that I was using for this. So um, if you kind of you, you'll better watch this back and you can check that. But basically, I went through this as one of the methods of listening through the whole track um, to kind of make make notes basically about things that I needed to do um, and then I can actually just kind of check these off and it's a very kind of cathartic way of working because it it gives me something to actually kind of work towards um, and then check off um, and then quickly move on to the next thing. Um, unfortunately I'm down to like 13 minutes now which is and I've still got a lot of other things to do but yeah um, please check that back um, and if you join the discord I'll be uploading those notes uh, those uh, that keynote those slides there as well so <laughs> okay let's take out the percussion as well there uh, All right, so we, we were on Tom Fields, weren't we? I think I've just inadvertently taken the kick out of that, so let's put that back there. There we go. All right, so what happens here? Hey, Duarte! How you do, man? God, it's a blast from the past. Thanks for the follow. Cool, put the Tom in there. Could be get could work really well there. Nice one, Duarte. Great to hear from you, man. I hope you're well. Okay, so I've added in my toms and I can check that off now. There we go. Add some toms for fills in. Um, okay, so what is the priority now? So some more modulation. I can add some synth sounds. That would be good. Improvisation on the JV sound. I think that's probably the priority here um, because I want to just... As Ben said earlier, just kind of give a bit more liveness to uh, this track. Cool. So how can I do that? Let's uh, have a look at what we've got here. Let's just open up the synth uh, group and let's just go to the JV electric piano. There we, there we go. We love it. Look at that. That's not it. the Clive Davis documentary on Netflix last night um, which focused a lot on Whitney Houston um, and their you know the relationship that they they had a working relationship they had and uh, yeah that kind of reminds me of that very kind of 80s uh, Whitney Houston sound um, although saving all my all my love for you is actually a real rose I think going through a through, going through a chorus um, what a tune um, okay, so JV, let's. What, what I'm going to do for this is uh, I'm not going to use up any more CPU by um, creating another track, and I don't want to record this over the top of these parts, the chords that are coming in here. Um, if we just listen to those, very, very simple. Um, so I'm going to create a, a new MIDI track, and I do this with drums actually a lot as well. Uh, is that I'll just take the output. Uh, into the JV piano, there we go, uh, of that track. And then the track in will just go to channel one. 
Um, and then that means that uh, if I just unsolo that, it's just going to be recording wherever I play. It's going to record onto a separate channel, MIDI track. It's not going to interfere, but it's just playing um, the actual instance of this JV. Uh, so let's just see what happens if I play it all. Cool. Let's um, let's make it more exciting by quickly bringing up my. Uh, VMPK. Uh, and I think I'm just going to go down from the top. I'm running out, so I've got eight minutes. Um, so I might not be able to finish off everything that I wanted to do, but at least have I got this, and then I can probably at a later date just sift through some of these parts um, and then finish it off. But we have to have a time limit, don't we? It's a Sunday. I've got family and stuff as well, kind of uh, need to do things with. A scrabble and stuff. Um, okay, so so we're in, we're in um, E minor. So let's just hit record and see what happens. Thanks for the follow. Okay, um, before I do that, I'm just gonna quickly delete that and I'm gonna turn off the call quantize because I don't want it to, if I kind of do some like, I don't want it to um, automatically quantize those. stuff but you know there might be some little little kind of licks that I can just take how long I've got four minutes
so there's some bits in there. Um, I'm going to have to sort of sift through those uh, another stage, but the good thing is, obviously they're kind of out of time, um, but I can just add the groove to the to that, uh, and then that should put it in time uh, non-destructively. Okay, um, I think what I'll probably do is have a listen to that and then maybe either find a different sound for it or I think it's a bit, it's obviously a bit too dominant, it's a bit, it's a bit loud, um, so it might need some kind of different processing. Um, cool, all right, well, look, let's just let's just label that um, as added. Uh, e piano um, and let's just give that the color as well uh, that we need so that's that green isn't it let's just give it that green there we go uh, and let's do assign color to clips um, okay I've got two minutes uh, so I'm gonna tick that off uh, I had some add some delay to the snares yep that could be quite nice um, and uh, let's just see if we can if, let's have a look at the uh, massive and see if there's anything we can add to that sound. Uh, interestingly, it doesn't come in at the end as well. I'm wondering if we can use that more. Uh, but let's just have a look at the automation, see if I've actually got any of that in there already. Um, uh, is there anything? Doesn't look like there's anything there. Uh, and on massive lead no so nice that's really nice that gives it uh, a really nice flavor so all right let's just uh, mute that see that's the advantage of, of setting up another MIDI track as well as you can just mute mute it there um, okay, so let's just maybe just uh, record a bit of this down now um, and then we can see what it sounds like. Uh, 40, 40, 47, 45 seconds. it up there we go modulation that's what I just did there we go okay cool so um, I again I'll kind of go through and add that so I think that's an hour is up. An hour goes incredibly quickly, um, but uh, I hope that kind of illustrated this this working method of basically just creating a checklist of things to do, um, and then working through them. And you can still you can see I've still got a few more bits to do, but that means I need to create a bit more time. But then I can get those done, um, and you know I can I'll, I'll add another section here, which is to uh, edit JV. Uh, electric piano e piano parts um, and then also with Ben's uh, suggestion earlier uh, try uh, alternative 
electric piano sound, uh, maybe roads. Um, or maybe kind of either the improvised parts or or actually to replace that. So I've got a couple of things there, but generally um, I'm quite happy with the arrangement now, which is something I really wanted to sort out. Um, and it's good. It's been yeah, I'm, I've kind of enjoyed that. So I'm going to head off now. Um, have a great rest of Sunday. Thanks for all the follows um, and getting involved in the chat as well. That's been brilliant. Um, and yeah, I've got some I've got some uh, exciting things coming up actually. Um, some deconstruction ideas. Um, thanks to Arte. Great. I'm, I'm just really enjoying kind of building building a bit of uh, the, the community here. And don't forget to join Discord. And also, to, if you do join the Discord, don't forget to connect your Twitch to your Discord as well. Um, and especially if you do uh, subscribe as well, because then you can get access to uh, the Discord channel. Um, but yeah. Thanks a lot, everyone. Enjoy the week, and I'll probably be back for a midweeker at some point as well, so I'll let you know.